somebody told me this morning, said, man, you're, you're the mom of the church, so all of y'all are my kids, I guess. <laughs> y'all not all invited to lunch today. <laughs> Only the originals. And we actually have a group text that uh, the original, five of us, and we, we keep it going. Uh, but happy Mother's Day to you all. Um, I just, I have lots of thoughts, lots of thoughts going in my head today, and I just hope and I pray and ask God that he will help me to convey those things. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for this awesome opportunity that you have given me, Lord, to stand before these precious people. Lord, my family of God, that you have placed us in, you have connected us to. Lord, and I just thank you for each and every one that's here that we can call the family of God. And Lord, I just ask that you would help me today, Lord, as I share my heart. And just help us, God, today to leave from this place with something that is going to help us. We thank you for all the things that you've done, all the things that you promised to do. We stand in faith believing that you will fulfill those things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, we've been doing a study for the last two or three weeks and on waiting on God. How many of you are waiting on God for, some, for something? You have something that you're waiting on God to, to fulfill in your life, to answer a prayer. And, you know, we've just prayed for all these officers, and, and I've just really been thinking about that this week. And um, there, there's lots of requests that are represented in each seat here in this, in this house. And I just want to say that if you have a praying mother, you're blessed. And those of you that maybe were not privileged to have that, God has connected you and placed you in the family of God. So now that you have lots of mothers that can pray with you, I could stand here and I could name different ones that um, may text me occasionally and say, hey, I've got this going on. Can you pray with me? And we do that. It's not a whole lot of fluff going on, but you know there's a connection and you know that that person on the other end of that text has made that connection with God as well. And I'm telling you, what does the scripture say? Where two or three agree. Y'all know that scripture? How many of you know that we are, there's more than two or three here today, and we're all going to agree today that God is going to perform miracles in this place. Things that you've prayed for for years, maybe you've just started praying for them. God is going to answer those prayers. Um, you know, I could tell you a whole lot of stories about my family um, I'll spare you some of it, but you know, we have three children together and God truly, truly blessed us. We're not perfect people, but we're people of, of faith and people that love God. And you know, right now, as, as we speak, our oldest daughter is on her way to Athens, Greece for a mission trip. And that in itself is a miracle. Things that we prayed and prayed, we had seen shipwreck, we had had all sorts of things come against us. But you know what? God's faithful. And God is, has began to fulfill in her life dreams that she thought had been taken from her and that she would never be able to see and to realize. But is God a good God or not? But today I want to share. I have some friends here that I want to, them to come and share a little bit of something with you. And um, where's June? Oh, there you are. I'm going to invite June Spears to come up to the stage, but I'm going to invite her mom, Debbie, to come too. I pulled it on you because I knew you'd stress if I told you ahead of time. <laughs> but I tell you what, this is one of my childhood friends right here. We went through school together. Were we perfect people? No, we weren't, but we had a faithful God to us. And so June shared her testimony with us the other night for just a minute. But I just want you to sit here and I want you to grasp the true faithfulness of a loving God. His kindness and his mercies that are new to us each and every day. But this is Miss Debbie and this is Miss June. And Debbie is June's mom. And so you just tell us a little bit, De oh, June. Hey, good morning. Okay, so I was raised in church, and um, I knew that Jesus died for my sins, but I didn't know Jesus at all, personally. I thought that God was this big being in the sky, and that um, 
He was going to allow me into heaven if I was good enough, and he was going to put me into hell if I wasn't. So with this mindset, I never did feel worthy. I didn't feel loved, and I had this just gaping hole inside of me. And at a very young age, I started just grasping all the things of the world to try to fill this hole, which eventually in 2017 led to uh, my physical death through an overdose. Jesus showed up in that at the hospital, and he breathed life back into my lungs, and he gave me a second chance. A few weeks later, um, on Father's Day of all days, I actually met this Jesus, and he had picked my head up just from the shame, and I actually looked into his eyes for the first time, and just in those eyes, I saw just everything that I had been searching for out there, everything I could possibly ever need right there in him. And then I saw that God wasn't this angry man in the sky, but he actually was a loving father. And the whole time he had his arms spread wide open, just waiting for me to come home. I decided to that day on Father's Day. And then um, Jesus actually, over the last few years, has taken every single chain that has fallen on the ground that day. And he's taken them and he's used them for... um, just gateways for me to be able to help other people walk into freedom and help other captives get set free. <laughs> so good. And to top it all off, um, what would have been the sixth anniversary of my physical death, he actually placed me on this very stage for me to be able to just stand here and just proclaim his goodness and be a beacon of life and hope for all others. Because that's just how good he is, and it's all for his glory, honor, and praise. So that sixth, that sixth anniversary was last Sunday, and she texted me Monday morning. She said, I didn't put the timeline together until this morning, that six years ago she was in a hospital on life support with her mom there praying, lots of prayers going up. And God had her stand on the stage because the doctors had told them, when we unplug her, it's done. But we know the power of a God. And I just, you know, Debbie, we went to school together, and like I said, June is her oldest child. But there was also a woman here at this church that had a major influence on your life. Just That's my mama, y'all. That's my mama. This is my sister here. And um, we love our mom. You know, praying, praying moms, y'all. That's what we do. You know, when she, like Melissa said, when she was in the hospital, I was just there. It was just me and her. And she's hooked up to all these machines, and the doctors kind of came in and came out, and I just kind of sat there and just prayed. You know, th- this answered prayers. He answers prayers. He's faithful, y'all. He's so faithful. Don't quit praying, especially your mama's. Because, you know, we're the stronger. Thank you. Thank you. So I just wanted her to share that. On the sixth anniversary of what would have been her death, God saw a better plan. And how many of you know that God sees a better plan for your life, too? Things that you're praying for, don't stop. We're going to get there in just a little bit. But I want to invite Lauren to the stage. for, And she's going to share with you for just a minute. I'm so thankful for Lauren. She's part of our family. Um, married my one and only son. God bless you, Lauren. Good morning, everybody. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Um, I'm a facts person. Like, I just like random scientific facts. So I was looking up some things um, that kind of really make you appreciate how God created the woman and the mom. And I wanted to share them with you. Uh, The first one is... The mom with the most children ever gave birth to was 69 children. She had like multiple sets of multiples through 15 years or something crazy. I don't know. (laughs) Um, There are more than 2 billion mothers on the world right now, and 4.3 babies are born every second. And God gave you your specific child out of all those babies. Like he knew who you needed and who needed you. Um, The largest child recorded weight was over 22 pounds. (laughs) The average preschooler, ages 2 to 4, 
requires their mom's attention every four minutes or 210 times a day. <laughs> Most moms carry their children with the head up on the left side, and there's a reason. It's because the sensory information from the left side of your body processes in the right side of your brain. The right side of your brain processes all of your emotions. So if you're holding your child on the left side, your brain relates it more to your emotions. Thought that was interesting. Um, mom brain is a real thing. <laughs> Moms in their first trimester of pregnancy start to lose gray matter in their brain, and it can happen for up to two, till the child is two years old. Um, Moms will change an average of 7,300 diapers by the time their child is two. <laughs> and the last one is females are developed with all the eggs inside of them when they're inside their mother. So technically, when your grandmother was pregnant with your mother, the spark of you was already present. I thought that was really interesting. So no one is a mistake. And I have, um, I didn't make this up, I found this online. It's just, it's more towards young mothers, but it's four statements um, this lady came up with that can help you change your perspective through the long, hard days as a mom. <laughs> Number one is you're always doing the best you can. There's always a reason why you do what you do. It's okay to show your kids that you're tired sometimes, and it's okay to show them that you're human. They don't need to grow up with the idea that everything has to be perfect all the time and you have to be perfect all the time. Um, number two is, this is something I can handle. If you have that set in your mind, whatever comes at you from those crazy kids, <laughs> you can deal with it. You have a track record of 100% proven to have already overcame everything you've already been through. Um, number three is, challenges are a new opportunity for learning and growth. Um, just always ask, how, what am I meant to learn through this? Because your kids teach you just as much as you teach them, honestly. <laughs> um, and it's hard to do in the midst of the chaos sometimes, but just remember that there's a reason for everything. And the last one I thought was the most important one, and I, uh, this has been kind of my, my motto for this year, this is my chance. This is my chance to impart into my kids because right now they trust me the most and well, my husband too. We're the most important imparters in their lives right now and at, they'll get to a point where they won't be. And our kids, we don't watch the news or anything like that. We don't get out a lot, but they have a strange interest in politics and they ask a lot of questions. <laughs> But Daryl and I, we're always, we're honest with them and we tell them the truth because we know that they're gonna get answers from somewhere and it should be us. <laughs> um, so we encourage the questions and it can wear on us sometimes, but we encourage them to think outside the box and we just teach them what we know that way, whatever they say in school or wherever else, you know, that's what we, <laughs> so. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. We're so thankful for Lauren and our family. Um, and she does have some inquisitive children. So if you don't have an answer, you better make up a good one. Uh, but I want to share for just a minute, and then we're going, to ha we're going to have prayer for everyone. But I had asked um, you a question a while ago. What is it that you've been praying for that has not been fulfilled yet? And this doesn't just apply for moms. By the raising of your hands, is there a prayer that you have prayed, something in your life that you've asked God for that hasn't been fulfilled yet? I think everybody in here has that. You know, um, been looking at the story of, of Hannah in 1 Samuel, and we all know, uh, most of us know that story. And when she had gone to the temple, um, and her husband had two wives, poor fellow. You know, and Penina, she had, 
children, and Hannah could not have children. And to me, that just kind of symbolizes that somebody has the things, and then there's something that you're praying for. And so Penina, and I think we could probably all relate this to having a Penina in, in our lives. When they would go at a certain time, she would always kind of taunt her. I've got this, and you don't have that. I've got this, and you don't have that. And that begins to weigh on your mind and just, it affects you. And you know, that's the way the world in our culture today tries to make us feel. You know what, I've got this over here, and you don't have that. But you know what, that, that got to Hannah, and she began to pray, and she began to pour her heart out to God, to the point that Eli thought that she was drunk. And, I, you know, I can imagine, have you ever been to that point in life to where you might be in a room by yourself? You're just pouring your heart out to God, and it's, it's ugly. It can get to be an ugly mess. And, and you're just pouring your heart out to God. And so she was sharing this, and I'm going to read in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 1. It says, verse 12. Actually, I'm going to back up to verse 11. It says, and she made a vow saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long will you keep on getting drunk? Get rid of your wine. Not so, my Lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. So Eli looked at her and answered, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked. She said, May your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. So that right there tells us that, that we get to that point. You know, we have these prayers. Sometimes we need them for breakthrough. Sometimes we need them to renew ourselves, And sometimes we just need to be refreshed. But we need to pour our hearts out to God for whatever's going on. Early the next morning, they arose and worshiped before the Lord and then went back to their home. And then the story goes on. I'm not going to finish reading all of it to it, uh, to it. But it doesn't say how long the time was, but we all know that she had a baby, right? And she kept her promise and her vow that she had prayed to God. Um, but you know, um, had written this down here, uh, and sometimes it's like we're in a waiting room. You know, when we birth in a child, we, we are waiting. We wait nine months, and lots of changes go on. During that time, we have to take care of ourselves. There's certain things that you must do. And it's the same thing in the spiritual realm with us. If we've, we've put a petition out to God for ourselves, there are certain things that we need to do. We have to obey the word of God. We have to be faithful. We have to trust him. Those are all things that we must do. But holding on to a healthy perspective during God's delay, and she had a delay. How many of you have had a delay in something that you've prayed for? I know that I have. Um, but holding on to this healthy perspective during God's delay is crucial to not missing a blessing that God wants you to experience. Because in everything that we do, Lauren just uh, talked about how many minutes your child needs and 210 times a day, that's all day long. You know, but there's things that's going on in our lives all the time that we must maintain this healthy perspective of who God is. Because there's things that, that he wants us to experience that would be a blessing. You know, um, Elkanah, he gave Hannah a double portion. But because of somebody that was always there taunting her, she wasn't even able to really enjoy the blessings that had been given her. And that's just the way we are in our lives. You know, God will give us something, and then here comes the little naysayers, or here comes those that want to steal something from you. And I'm telling you all, we have to stand up and fight for ourselves sometimes in the spirit. Um, but a healthy perspective remembers God's character. And we, we know that we serve a loving God 
a gracious God. And what does the scripture tell, tell us? That he is mercies are new to us. What? It's not once a week. It's not once a month. It's every day. But Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. I'm going to read this. It says, remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please. And you know, it, it's, we're, we're women of, of influence, we're people of influ influence, and like Lauren was sharing about the kids, we influence every day, and it's not just our natural kids. There's some in here that, um, I'll just be honest, I kind of help mother you. And, and I, I totally enjoy getting texts from those that are close to me. Um, I'm going to hang y'all out. Kim, Scott, your mama and me, are, we're texting prayer partners. And, you know, I, I, can't, I can't tell you how many times that we have prayed. She'll text me and say, hey, I need prayer for this. It's done. It's a done deal. Alicia War. She's one of my text and prayer buddies. There's, and I could name a whole bunch of you in here. There is power in agreement, in the, in the power of in agreement in prayer. But the next one is a healthy perspective remembers God's attitude toward you. And June shared it a while ago. She thought that, you know, her, her perspective of God was somebody up there just waiting on me to mess up. No, that's not our God. Romans 8:38, and this is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, it says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in our Christ, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And I wanted to share this uh, version, the Passion Translation of that same scripture. It's, uh, so now I live with the confidence that there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. I'm convinced that his love will triumph over death, life's troubles, fallen angels, or dark rulers in the heavens. There is nothing in our present or future circumstances that can weaken his love. There is no power above us or beneath us, no power that could ever be found in the universe that could distance us from God's passionate love, which is lavished up on us through Lord Jesus, the anointed one. And the next thing that we need to have a healthy perspective on is God's promises. Jeremiah 29, 11. How many of you know that scripture? For I know the plans I have for, for you. They are plans to what? prosper you, to give you a hope and to give you a future. In Isaiah 40, 31 also it says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And you know, uh, we, I, who was I talking to about the, it was Matt Jones about the bird feeders a while ago. We were talking about bird feeders in our backyards. And um, how many of you see the birds and you know, there, there's different methods of flight for the birds. One is flapping. Keeping their, they just have to keep their wings in constant motion like a hummingbird. How many of you got hummingbird feeders out right now? You know, they just, they work them, themselves to death. And you've always got this one, I'm going to call him the panina, the little red throat one. He's standing over here. He won't let the others eat because he's going to come and try to drive them away. I'm thinking there's six hummingbird feeders right here. Y'all could all go to one apiece. But no, he's got to stand there and torment somebody else. So the next uh, method of flight is gliding. Here the bird builds up enough speed then coasts downward in a while. It is much more graceful than flapping, but unfortunately it does not get the bird very far. Reality in the form of gravity sets in quickly and gliding is nice, but it doesn't last. I mean, if you ever threw one of those little planes, those little glider things, what happens eventually? Usually nose dives right into the ground. But just like we read this scripture, they that mount up with wings as what? Eagles. 
Um, only a few birds such as, eagles, as, such as eagles are capable of soaring. Eagles' wings are so strong that they are capable of catching rising currents of warm air, thermal winds that go straight up from the earth, and without moving a feather can soar up to great heights. Eagles have been clocked at up to 80 miles per hour without flapping at all. So we need to be like the scripture says, mount up with wings as eagles. Don't be no hummingbird. Um, in Hebrews 4.16, we read the scripture a while ago in, in 1 Samuel how Hannah prayed. And prayer is the key for us. The life that we live, a life of obedience to the word of God. When we pray, something begins to happen. Uh, Hebrews 4.16 in the NLT says, So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy. And we will find grace to help us when we need it most. How many of you have ever been to the throne of God and you've, you've poured out your heart, but you hadn't seen something fulfilled just yet? But that scripture says we will find at the throne of our gracious God, we will find grace to help us when we need it the most. In the Passion Translation, it says, So now we draw near freely and boldly to where grace is enthroned. Oh, but for his grace. To receive mercy's kiss and discover the grace we urgently need to strengthen us in our time of weakness. And then the Amplified Version, these three different versions of this, it says, Therefore let us, with privilege, approach the throne of grace. That is the throne of God's gracious favor with confidence and without fear so that we may receive mercy for our failures and find his amazing grace to help in time of need an appropriate blessing coming just at the right moment so how many of you once again have something that we need to pray about we need to agree together um but Hannah, when she was in the temple and she prayed, she began to release herself and she began to worship God. And how many of you know sometimes when our, we're praying and then you shift over into that worship of our gracious God, things begin to shift, things begin to take place in the spiritual realm that only God can do. Um, in Isaiah 26, 3, it says, You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you, trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is the eternal rock. Um, would you stand with me, please? And I'm going to ask my mother to come to the stage, please. You know, and during our time of praying and asking God for the needs that we have, uh, you know, instead of saying, God, I'm, I'm waiting. Have you ever just said this to somebody? God, I'm waiting on you to do whatever and fill in that blank. How many of you have said that today? God, I'm waiting on you to heal this. God, I'm waiting on you to fix this relationship. But, you know, instead of, of saying that, God, I'm waiting on you, during that waiting time, why can't we sh shift our thought and say, God, I'm worshiping you today? that you are healing. I'm worshiping you today, Lord, that you're going to repair what we need. Lord, I'm worshiping you today that you're going to refresh. You're going to renew. We're going to restore all of these things. And those of you that don't know, this is my mother. And a little bit, you know, she, she's such a woman of influence. And everybody in here is... You're people of influence. Never doubt that you're people of influence. And, you know, the, I, some of you know our story and some of you don't. But my, my birth mother passed when I was five years old. And my dad remarried two years later. And he married this precious little lady right here. So she's been my mother for a long time. And she's been the mother of this church. For 43 years, she was the mother of this church. And so now she is still the mother of our family and keeps us all together. But I want to ask all the mothers. 
I'm going to ask all the mothers to come down all to the front, and I want you to squeeze in just as close as you can. And I, as you're coming, I know that everybody, every person that comes, this is going to be represented a request, a prayer request that you have, something that's near and dear to your heart that we're going to present here today at the altar. And instead of saying, God, I'm waiting on you to do, fill in, you fill in the blank. God, I'm waiting on you to whatever. Let's shift our words and let's say, God, I'm worshiping you for healing my child, bringing my child, setting my child free. I'm worshiping you for, you fill in the blank. We're going to wait. Y'all come on and push in because we have a lot of mamas here. Isn't this wonderful? All you guys, give all these women a good hand. Steve loves you, Shannon. Yeah. All right, they're still coming on. Y'all come on, push in. But anyway, I want you to think in your mind right now. Miss Edna, it's so good to see you today. Um, just, I want you to say it. God, I'm worshiping you far. And I want you to finish that sentence. We're going to do it one more time. And you finish your sentence just what you're worshiping God for. We're not just waiting, but in that waiting, we're going to worship God. God, I'm worshiping you for your grace in my life. I'm going to ask my mom to pray for us. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I'm so humbled to stand here before such a beautiful, beautiful group of mothers. What, what, if, if we could just know, Lord, everything that's in these hearts. Lord, I thank you for every one of them. And I thank you for that need that every one of them is needing that we heard this morning that you're going to meet those needs. Lord, your power and your grace is sufficient for these lives. Honor each one of them, Lord. Let them know that you are with them. Meet every need, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I ask for miracles. Lord, I ask for miracles in these lives this morning, Lord. Meet every need. Lord, let the hand of protection be up on each one of them. Lord, we thank you that you will meet the needs this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to walk away from here and, and remember that scripture in, in Hebrews. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace. How many of you are going to go to boldly to the throne of grace? And you're going to be worshiping on the way, worshiping him for what he has done. I want